They say that there are about three certainties in life. One is we can be sure that we will die. Two, we can be sure there will always be change. Three, we can be sure, according to Benjamin Franklin and according to also the leaders that we see around today, we can be sure that there will always be taxes that we have to pay. And I think the fourth is we can be sure that there will always be problems for which we have to find solutions. And as leaders, this becomes even more uh, important, isn't it? As leaders, we have to face problems, we have to solve them, and we have to lead others in solving these problems. So this video is about what are the 10 habits of great problem solvers? What are the 10 habits of leaders who have been great at solving problems? So we're going to talk about 10 habits. Stay with us right to the end so you don't miss out on anything important. The 10 habits of great problem solvers. So the first habit of a, of a great problem solver is that in order to solve a problem, we need to have a growth mindset. We need to be thinking, yes, if there is a problem, there is definitely a solution out there. In my case, I'm always thinking, if there is a problem, there has to be a solution. We may not know the solution yet, but that doesn't mean there is no solution. If there is a problem, there's definitely a solution for the problem. That's a growth mindset. Fixed mindset is, this is all I know. There is a problem. I don't know how to fix this. And that's it. I can't move forward. There is a closed door now because I don't know the solution to the problem. Growth mindset, there is a problem. I don't know the solution, but I believe there is a solution. So let's find it. And as soon as we even tell our minds, there is a solution, our mind starts looking for the solution because our mind works on the direction that we give it. It's like as a leader, our team members work on the direction that we as leaders give them. In the same way, our mind works on the direction that we give our mind. If we tell our mind there's a problem, I don't believe there's a solution, your mind will also not try to find a solution. Because your mind says, right, I have been told there is no solution, so let me just rest then. But if you tell our mind, there is a problem, but I know for sure there is a solution. Find me the solution. Your mind is going to start being solution-oriented, trying to find the solution. What's the solution? Does that make sense? So it's all what we tell our mind. So embracing a growth mindset. So great problem solvers believe in continuous learning. We're always learning. We're always trying to be better. We're always trying to learn new ways of doing things. We are not afraid to say that we made a mistake because it's by making mistakes that we learn, that we grow. It's by owning up to the mistakes that we can then choose a different path. Because if I don't want to own up to the mistake I have made, I have to then continue down that same path even though I know it's the wrong path. They say that men don't want to ask for directions. Let's say we are going somewhere. We don't want to ask for directions. Is that is that true? I, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is a stereotype that is sometimes associated with us men, isn't it? That we don't want to ask for directions. Maybe. It's because we don't want to admit we are wrong. But we need to, isn't it? If we are wrong, we need to own up to it, admit to it, because then we can change direction, do something different, find the solution uh, to the problem, isn't it? Another aspect of growth mindset is understanding that nothing is permanent. Intelligence and abilities can always be developed. If someone has done it, anyone else can learn how to do it. And why not us? That's all about uh, having a growth mindset, always thinking openly, thinking out of the box. Uh, looking at possibility and uh, not looking at, uh, you know, limitation, but looking at possibility. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the future depends on what you do today. So it doesn't matter. There's a problem. Let's let's take action. Let's do something different. Let's start taking at least one step towards solving the problem. A great example of a leader with a, with a growth mindset was the former president of India, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam who was an aerospace scientist. Throughout his work on the India's missile program, there, there were so many, so many setbacks, so many mistakes, but he, he was really determined, okay, let's do this, let's keep moving forward, let's, let's learn from our failures, and they kept, you know, moving forward until they finally uh, succeeded. Great leader that we can learn a lot from, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, who really exemplified this whole thing of a, a growth mindset. Lots of other leaders like that, but uh, this is one, one of the examples. The second habit of uh, great problem solvers is to stay curious. Always ask questions. You know, as children, we were so curious, isn't it? Right? As a child, we would look up at the sky and say, uh, Mom or Dad, why, why is the sky blue? 
And I'm sure our kids have done the same with us, isn't it? So many questions, so many questions. Why is this? Why is this? Why is that animal like this? What happens when I die? Is there heaven? What, what, what is in there in heaven? Who is God? There is so many questions, right? That a child would ask because they are so curious and they haven't been told, look, there are no answers to these questions. So they think for any question, there is an answer and they will be curious. And as I, as I, as I say a lot, curiosity of children is killed by the schools. So no sooner the child goes to school, curiosity is killed because you're taught focus very narrowly. It's just on this lesson at this time, right? Don't ask questions. Just write down what's on the board. Listen to what the teacher says and we will lose out big time. Some of our schools are now changing the whole way of education and that's really important because when the child finally graduates and comes into industry, the organization that this child now belongs to or works in expects this child to be innovative, to be creative, to come out with ideas. But if the curiosity is no longer there, how can this child do this? So curiosity is extremely important, isn't it? Uh, Jack Welch, one of the most well-known, most successful CEOs of the world uh, for his leadership of General Electric says that one of the main reasons they were successful was they were so curious. They were ready to learn from anyone, anywhere. If there was a better way of doing it, they would learn, they would adopt, they would move forward. They say that there is no better compliment than copying someone, isn't it? If someone is successful, let's, let's copy that. Tony Robbins says the same thing. You want to find out how to do something. You want to find uh, how to have a better golf stroke, uh, how to have a better, uh, to swim better, how to sing better. Go study someone who's really good at that. Find out what they do, copy their habits, and you'll find that you're yeah, taking a few steps closer to the goal. Because, because all of this behavior can be uh, copied, can be modeled, can be learned, can be, you know, you, we, we can learn it, we can do it. Just do the same thing. Just do the same thing. So from, uh, from Tim Ferriss, one of Tim Ferriss's books, uh, where he was talking of, was it four, four hour body? I think maybe the four hour body. Uh, how, do you, how do you get a better bang for your buck by exercising for less time, but you know, doing things uh, better. One of the things he said is when you're, when you're jogging, if you lean forward, you actually end up jogging faster because that momentum is going to make you move faster. I've tried that, it works. It's a small hack. Another one, you lift your knees while you're jogging, you move faster. Small hack. Right? Not that I'm a great athlete, but these are some of the little things that, uh, that I do. Yeah? So, stay curious, ask questions. Extremely important if we want to uh, solve problems. So, Albert Einstein says, the important thing is not, to stop, is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. So, if, if someone tells us, don't question this, we have to think, why are they saying that? No. If you want to find a solution, we have to keep questioning, 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 questioning till ultimately we find the solution. Uh, they say uh, if you want to find the root cause to, to, to a problem, ask why. Why is this happening? Maybe five times, seven times so that you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Because the first answer you get is never the real answer. It's never the real solution. We need to keep digging. We need to keep digging till we finally find uh, the solution. Another great leader. Uh, who always stays curious and asks questions is Elon Musk. When he wanted to uh, get into space uh, and, and, and start uh, building rockets, he was amazed at the high price of rockets. He, was, he questioned, why, why is this? Why, why should it be? Somebody else would have said, ah, yes, it's too expensive. Okay, let's, let's not do it. Only someone like NASA can do this. But he said, okay, but what goes into a rocket? What are the materials? And he found it's basic materials that you can buy at a hardware store. The, the steel and whatever it is. Very basic materials. And when you looked at the cost of those materials, they were the fraction of a cost of the rocket. They thought, why, why can't we do this? And then he put his whole team to figure out, okay, we need to do this. There is a solution to this problem. Let's do this. And what they finally created was his curiosity they led him to develop what he, what he calls reusable rockets. Because earlier, you send off a rocket into space, when it comes back into the atmosphere, well, that's it. Uh, you can't reuse that. But he's, he's in reusable rockets. That's what he's, uh, he's aiming to do. He has revolutionized the space industry and drastically, radically reduced the cost of uh, space travel. So that's, that's great. Why is he doing this? Because he's not satisfied with the answer. If it's not a great solution, he keeps questioning. No, why? Why can't it be? Why can't we be? Why can't we do something different? And then actually you find the answer. So keep questioning, keep questioning, keep questioning. And we are going to find better answers. One of his statements, what he has said is, I think it's important to reason from first principles rather than analogy. 
the normal way we conduct our lives is we reason by analogy. So someone says we can't do this. Yes, probably you can't, right? But when you want to do something new, you have to apply the physics approach is what Elon Musk says. First principle. So first principles is what is the rocket made of? It's made of these components. What are the cost of these components? Oh, they are really cheap. Why is the rocket expensive? What do we need to do differently? So go back to first principles. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the foundation. Build from there. Yeah, I think that's, that's great, isn't it? Number three is focus on solutions, not problems. Yeah, somebody comes to me, says, Sanjeev, I have a problem. I say, okay, fine. What are the possible solutions? I don't know, Sanjeev. All right. Can you go away? Can you go back and think of some possible solutions to this problem and come back and talk to me? So we force people to think. We force people to be innovative. We force people to be creative. It's very easy to come and say, we have a problem. Well, what's the solution? <laughs> so let's be solution oriented, not problem oriented. Solution oriented, not problem oriented. Uh, when Sri Lanka first went into the economic crisis, for a long time I was listening to the uh, parliamentary debates, trying to find out which leader is going to start talking about solutions. And there was hardly anyone talking about solutions. Most of our parliamentary leaders were talking of the problem. Why the problem occurred? Whose fault is it? Going back even 70 years and saying, you know, 50 years ago you did this, 60 years ago your party did this, 70 years ago your party did this, but not really talking of the solution. There is a problem, so let's forget about who caused the problem. How is that going to help us solve the problem? We need to solve the problem. That's what is so important, right? So focus on solutions. So when we tell our mind, look, there is a problem. I think there's a solution. What's the solution? Our mind is going to start focusing on that. So we have something in our brain called the reticular activation system, which will always give us what we are looking for. So if you are looking for solutions, it will give us more solutions. If you are looking for problems, it will give us more problems. It's, it's a very, very good servant. It gives us what we are looking for. So be careful what you are looking for. Be careful what you ask for because <laughs> you might actually get it. So what's the great thing to do? What's the clever thing to do? What's the intelligent thing to do? Let's look for solutions and not problems. Yeah, Tony Robbins says, every problem is a gift. Without problems, we would not grow. And that's 100% that's correct. I totally, totally agree with Tony, right? It's through the problems we get that we grow. Because if there are no problems, we are going to remain at the status quo, right? We just keep doing what we're doing the same way. When the problem arises, we need to find a solution. With that solution, we might find a better way of doing something. We raise the bar, we get to the next level. So problems are not bad things. And whether we like it or not, there are going to be problems. So let's accept that. Whether you like it or not, there are going to be problems. So we need to always be solution oriented. One of our leaders actually, our current president, uh, Rani Vikramasinghe, although there are many people who will talk uh, negative things about him as well. I for one think, he was one of the few leaders who actually got up and said, okay, I'll take, I'll take it on. We have an economic crisis, okay? I'll take on the job of pulling us out of this. Uh, so if, if you talk to people today, they'll say, no, we are not out of it. Our debt has increased. We still have a problem. Yes, no doubt we have. But the problem seems to be managed better now. We don't have long, long, long queues for petrol or diesel where people were dying in these queues. We don't have long queues for gas, where people didn't have gas to cook at home. Uh, there, there are no long queues for, you know, uh, basic uh, needs of people. So, yes, we are, we are being, uh, doing better. The rupee has appreciated against the dollar from where it was. It's better. Life is better. Have we solved the problem? Not yet. But I believe we are on the road to doing that. Things are better than they were a year ago, so many months ago. Things are better. So, Ranil Vikramasinghe was actually someone who focused on the solution, not just the problem. Is everything perfect? No, it's not. But let's, let's give him his due. He was one of the leaders who stood up and said, I'll take it on. When every other leader, when they were even like, they could have taken on the presidency uh, or taken on the, the leadership, uh, they, they didn't want to do that. Uh, I'm not going to take on a problem which has no solution. Looking for solutions, not just looking for problems. So focus on the solutions and not on the problems. I know there will be lots of, uh, lots of people who might not agree with what I'm saying here, but nevertheless, that's, that's what I think. And I think we, are all, uh, we, we, we can all have our own opinions, right? 
focus on solutions, not on the problems. And I think uh, some of our leaders are actually doing that, which is a good thing. Number four is thinking critically and logically. Right? So as a problem, if you become emotional about it, you oh, it's oh my gosh, this is a problem. Uh, it's my fault. I created this problem. Okay, I'm so stressed out over it. I'm so down over it. No, what, what's the point? What's the point? That's not going to help us solve it. You have to think critically. Even if you know the problem is that you're sick. Okay, right? So that's the reality. Let's accept the reality. And then let's say, see, what do I do now? That's all, isn't it? We need, in order to solve any problem, we have to accept the reality of the problem. There's no point of sugarcoating it. There's no point of building castles in the air. There's no point of having wishful thinking. It's accept the reality. What is the problem? This is not thinking negatively, right? It is just being realistic. If somebody says, Sanjay, if you're sick, okay, fine. Why do you say that? Okay, these are what the test results show. Okay, fine. Uh, what are the, what do I do now? And even if someone says, you know, there is a huge chance that you will never get out of this. Uh, I could also think, right? Yes, but there is some chance that I could solve the problem, that I could heal. And what is that possibility? What do I do to get there? Let's just think logically, rationally. Uh, some people, when they go to a doctor and the doctor looks at the test results and even the doctor's face changes, the doctor is looking, oh, this, this doesn't look good, Sanjeev. There are patients who would, you know, just faint right there before the doctor even saying uh, what, what is wrong because they have got so emotional. They, they, have, they have really felt the problem. And sometimes we blow this problem out of uh, proportion, isn't it? Problems are going to be there. Let's think critically and logically. What's the problem? How do we solve it? And let's keep emotions aside. Let's not blame anyone. Let's not blame ourselves. Let's not play the blame game. Let's try to find uh, solutions, right? How do we do that? Get the best problem solvers. As a leader, I don't think I know all the answers. Let me find people who do know the answers. Let me get these people to help me to solve the problem. Yeah, there are lots of good minds there, right? So there's this whole thing of think tanks, uh, getting a good uh, group of people together, getting a good group of mentors to help you. Different minds, different mindsets, different perceptions, different ways of thinking. And we can have people helping us to uh, solve the problem. Yeah. Let's not try to do everything ourselves because we don't know. Uh, everything. We don't know it all. So critical thinking helps problem solvers to approach challenges in a methodical way and make, you know, really well thought out, well reasoned uh, decisions. And that's, that's great. As Benjamin Franklin says, learn, 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 learn more. And investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So don't stop learning until the day we die. As Mahatma Gandhi also said, learn as if you were to live forever. So there's a great story of Ratan Tata, the former chairman of Tata Industries in, the, in, in India, when he launched the uh, Tata Nano, he realized that there was, a, there was a need for an affordable car in India, right? And he approached this with a very logical, innovative solution, bringing the price of the car down so much that he made the Tata Nano accessible to millions of uh, people, right? Because the price was, was very cheap. There's another problem that arose after that, but let's look at it a little bit later. For now, yeah, Ratan Tata uh, actually looked at the problem in a logical way and came out uh, with the solution, which was for him uh, the Tata Nano, looking at something in a critical and logical way. The fifth habit of great problem solvers or great leaders who are solving problems is staying calm under pressure. Uh, say you're the captain of a ship, there is a storm and the captain of the ship starts getting excited and starts thinking, my gosh, we might drown. The, the ship might capsize. What's going to happen with the rest of the crew and the passengers? It's going to be panic, isn't it? So even in the worst possible situation, the leader needs to stay calm under pressure. The leader needs to always be positive, needs to be optimistic, needs to tell people, don't worry, we will find a solution. Don't worry, I am there with you. I will lead you out of this. We will find a solution. We will get out of this. The leader needs to lead the way. Stay calm under pressure. A leader who gets excited, who gets stressed out, who starts losing his school is, is not a great leader, isn't it? Because the followers are also going to uh, start panicking. If the leader thinks there is no way out, if the leader thinks this company is going to crash, if the leader thinks the country is going to crash, we don't have a solution. What do we think? <laughs> yeah, we are going to also feel very scared, very nervous, isn't it? So leader needs to always be calm under pressure. And that's a habit of a great problem solver. Because if we are panicking, we can't find the solution as well, right? 
when we can't stay calm under pressure and we, we lose our cool, we get stressed out, what happens is cortisol levels go up. When cortisol levels go up, a part of the brain called the hippocampus is not that functioning that way, which means we can't access our brain, we can't access our memories to find solutions to problems because we are not thinking clearly. Why are we not thinking clearly? Because our body is in flight or fight mode, just getting us ready to escape this danger. So we are all ready to run away, <laughs> but not really to find a solution. So to find a solution, we need to stay calm. Stay calm under pressure. One of the ways we can do that is if you watch one of our earlier videos, 16 seconds of bliss or box breathing. In just 16 seconds, in 32 seconds, if you do two cycles, how you can bring your cortisol and your stress levels down. And then we can actually think uh, in a more calm way and stay calm under pressure. Dalai Lama says, uh, calm mind brings inner strength and self-confidence. And so that's very important for good health. And I think that's absolutely true, right? Uh, what they say today is that, you know, stress is the biggest killer. It's not uh, heart disease. It's not cancer. It's not any of the other uh, general sicknesses that people think we are going to die of. But it's stress. And personally, I can vouch for that. <laughs> it, is, it is stress that caused or is causing or has caused uh, most of the problems I have had uh, health-wise. I know well, my stress is much more under control now. Do I still get angry occasionally? Yes, I do. But it's, it's less. I think it's less. And that's a great thing, right? So stress is the biggest killer. So we need to somehow find a way of managing, uh, managing stress, controlling it, bring it down. And one of the easy ways to do that is just change our perception. If you're always thinking there's a solution, well, there's no stress then. A great leader who exemplifies being calm under pressure is the previous uh, Prime Minister of uh, New Zealand, uh, Jacinda Ardern, when there, there was the Christchurch mosque shootings. She displayed exceptional calm and composure. The terrorist attack targeted two mosques and uh, there was a loss of 51 lives. And New Zealand is a very peaceful place, isn't it? Uh, not like some other places in the world, but even for New Zealand, so loss of 51 lives was like, uh, was like huge. So in, after this tragedy occurred, Arden showed remarkable leadership. She spoke to the people, she spoke to the nation uh, with a lot of empathy and strength. And she was calm and her calm demeanor helped to reassure everyone, okay, look, we have a problem, but we will solve it. I am with you. And one of her famous statements she made was uh, saying, they are us in reference to uh, talking about the Muslim community. So she's not a Muslim, but she said, they are us. And that's a great thing for a leader to say. You are all my people. You are all uh, people that, are, that, that, that I am leading as the, as the leader of this country. Not just one group, not just one religion, not just one ethnicity. And this is something we really want from our leaders as well, isn't it? And also showing calm, calmness and composure at calm under pressure. Because then the population is also going to feel, okay, things are under control, the leader is calm, there is a solution, we are being led by someone who can actually lead us out of this problem. And that's fantastic. The sixth habit of great problem solvers is to be persistent and determined. Because we are not going to solve problems in a flash. Right? Some of the problems might take months, might take years to solve. As long as we have a plan, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, we know we are moving forward, we are meeting shorter, smaller milestones, and we are in the right direction. Well, that's great, isn't it? So be persistent, be persistent, be determined that we are going to get out of this. So persistence is key to overcoming any obstacle and achieving our long-term goals. We, we can't be in a hurry. We have to be patient and persistent. And even when we face obstacles, we need to get up again. And the faster we get up, change direction, accept what are the mistakes, accept the faults, uh, take ownership for them, find solutions, keep moving forward. And Mahatma Gandhi was one of, one of the great examples of this. He was really persistent, really determined in everything he did to finally get independence for India. And he did this. He did this. Was it easy? No. Was it uh, in an instant that he got independence? No. It took many years of struggle. But he was persistent. Finally, there was a solution. So be persistent, be determined. Number seven is, we can't do this alone. We can't solve problems on our own. If I, as a leader, think I can solve everything on my own, well, I, I think that makes me very foolish. So we need to collaborate. We need to seek diverse perspectives. We discussed it a little bit earlier as well. So number seven is collaborate and seek diverse perspectives from others. There's a great story of a lady called Indra Nui, uh, who, was, uh, who was the CEO of PepsiCo, where uh, she actually 
took a collaborative approach and brought diverse voices, listened to diverse voices in order to help PepsiCo adapt to changing consumer preferences. So the, the, the public was demanding, you know, healthier food, uh, better healthier beverages, beverage options, right? And she listened to the stakeholders. She got her stakeholders, she got employees at different levels, not just the senior people, junior people as well. She listened to customers, she listened to experts in nutrition and sustainability. And she got all these different views to solve the problem. Got their ideas, got their opinions, and then she made a plan. What's PepsiCo going to do? They launched the PepsiCo initiative called Performance with Purpose, which was focused on improving the nutritional profile, the nutritional content or the nutritional profile of the company's products, and also reducing the environmental impact, supporting the community, uh, all of that, right? Yeah, total change in direction. She always believed that diverse perspectives would help her to solve problems, and that's what she actually did. One of the statement she, she said is, just because you're a leader, it doesn't mean you have all the answers. Is in the Nui. You need to create a space where people feel free to contribute ideas. And of course, you must be open to receiving them. Right? Uh, no point uh, having a suggestion box, getting people to put ideas into a suggestion box. You open the suggestion box and you're like, no, this is not it. Throw it away. Throw it away. I don't agree. I don't agree. Right? Then people are going to feel very, you know, demotivated and they're not going to give suggestions in the future as well yeah as a leader i strongly believe i don't have all the answers i need to have a good team help me find the answers and i believe uh, you are there as well you're a leader as a leader we don't have all the answers let's get a team together number eight is innovation and thinking creatively we need to think different if we are to solve problems we need to think different we can't be keep, keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result that was uh, einstein's definition of insanity doing something in the same way and expecting a different result. If there's a problem, I have to solve it. I have to think differently. Because otherwise, if I'm doing the same thing, I'm not going to solve the problem. I'm going to create more of the same problem. And Steve Jobs was a great uh, exponent of this. Good example of a leader who was always thinking innovatively and creatively uh, to, to you know, find solutions to problems. Some problems, the people didn't even know that they had a problem, but he thought, okay, there is... A future problem here let's find a solution right uh, a personal story uh, so there was a company that i was uh, heading called the revelations academy of performing arts where we were teaching kids from the age of four and up uh, even up to adults uh, singing drama uh, musical instruments and all of that and during covid you know it's really difficult to teach someone singing uh, online over, over a zoom call right but i had an amazing group of teachers who took on the challenge, innovated, changed the whole class structure, and we were even teaching four-year-olds, keeping their attention for one whole hour without a problem. And when schools took such a long time to you know, change their class structure into, into Zoom-friendly uh, Zoom classes, and even, even then the, the teacher doesn't switch on the video, neither do the students switch on the video. I have no idea how teaching happens in that context. But with us, with the Revelations Academy, my great, fantastic bunch of teachers, all young teachers, were very innovative, came up with different ways of engaging the students. Uh, they were so engaging, they were smiling, they were full of energy. That energy, you know, was absorbed by the students who were far, far away, sometimes miles away. And the students also responded. And right through COVID, almost two years, we continued with online classes and our numbers actually grew. We thought that it's going to shrink, but it, it was different, it grew. So this is a great story, personal story of how we actually transformed an organization, how we transformed the delivery uh, of, of our products and services to online, through Zoom, uh, during you know COVID, right? So there was a problem, how do we do this? How do we sustain? How do we teach? And we found a, a solution to that problem by thinking innovatively and creatively. Number nine is, we have to learn from our mistakes and failures. We discussed this uh, earlier as well. I, as a leader, can I make a mistake? Yeah, sure. Can we try something and fail? Yes, yeah, sure. Let's learn from it. What do we learn from it? Failure is not final, isn't it? Failure is not final. It's just a stage in the learning process, a stage in the growth process. So we failed. Let's learn from that. How do we develop? How do we change? What do we do differently? So great problem solvers are always looking at mistakes and failures as opportunities to learn and improve. As the great Chinese philosopher Confucius said, 
our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. So we need to continuously learn from our mistakes and keep moving forward. Even now, our training programs, we continuously evolve. We get feedback from our students, we get feedback from our clients, and we keep evolving the programs. Keep making it better, making it better, making it better. It's, it's a never ending journey, it's never complete, because we are always in the process of looking at it, looking at ourselves critically, how do we make things better? And even a missile, we say even a guided missile, it doesn't go straight to the target, right? It goes off course, right? And then it gets feedback, okay, you're off course, it turns, comes back again, goes off course again, gets the feedback, you're off course, turns, comes back again, and it keeps going like that until it finally uh, hits the target, right? So we have to be open for feedback in order to do that. So remember we spoke about Ratan Tata and how he, uh, you know, came up with the Tata Nano, uh, which was, which was he, uh, he really innovated there, came out with a car to solve a problem. So thinking critically and logically in order to solve that problem. And he did that. He came out with the Tata Nano, which was great. But then what they found was because they, they aimed this, positioned it as the cheapest car, uh, people thought, my gosh, cheap, cheapest car must be that there is a problem with quality. It must be that the car is not that great. Must be that it's not very safe. So finally, the, the, the car actually uh, failed to achieve the expected commercial success, right? But so Ratan Tata had to learn from this, okay? Yes, our positioning was wrong. Maybe we, we, we did something wrong. How do we change this? So he, instead of shying away from the failure, he took responsibility. He learned, he tried to figure out what did we do wrong? What did we learn from this? He acknowledged that they underestimated the perception issues which were related to position in the Nano as a cheap car. So people think cheap is no good. Rather than allowing this to define his leadership, he, he learned from it and did more market research, understood consumer perception, right? And changed his business strategies and he basically learned from that, right? And later on, they diversified into new industries and he actually acquired uh, Jaguar Land Rover and that was great, right? It led him to, you know, make, make, a, make a bigger global uh, footprint with these acquisitions as well. So what are we talking about? We will fail, yes. There will be problems, yes. There will be setbacks, yes. There will be mistakes, yes. We need to learn from them and move forward. Learn from them, take ownership, move forward. The 10th habit of great problem solvers, great leaders who are problem solvers, is to stay positive and be resilient, right? Keep being positive. Keep being positive. Is there a solution to the problem? Yes. Are we going to find this solution? Yes. Do we know the solution yet? No. But we are moving forward. We are finding the solution. We can do this. Staying positive and resilient. Because if we are staying positive and resilient, even our reticular activation system is going to help us. Because we are saying, there is a solution. There is a solution. Tell me the solution. There is a solution. Solution oriented. A great story of being positive and resilient in the worst of times with the biggest type of you know, obstacles you can face is uh, Malala Yousaf Zai, a Pakistani activist and she's uh, one of the youngest uh, Nobel Prize winners. So her story, and a great story, right? And there's a book also about it. One of the most powerful stories in recent history. In 2012, she was just 15 years old. Malala was shot in the head by the Taliban while riding a bus home from her school in, in Pakistan. And why did they shoot her? It was retaliation for her activism and outspoken advocacy for girls' education. You know, there are lots of people who feel uh, that girls should not be educated, that men should be educated more than uh, girls, that boys should be educated more than girls. So Malala uh, wanted, to, wanted to learn, wanted to study, and she was shot in the head for this. Despite the life-threatening injury, she remained positive and resilient. Can you imagine this? Months, it took months to recover, so much of surgery. She not only survived, but emerged out of this whole thing, even more positive, even more determined, even more resilient to fight for the rights for girls to receive an education. So her story inspired millions around the world. Yeah, and she continued her activism. And in 2014, she became the youngest ever Nobel Prize winner. Today, she continues to fight for education for children, uh, for girls, through what is called the Malala Fund, which works to provide girls with access to 12 years of free, safe and quality education. I think that's fantastic, isn't it? Being positive, staying positive, staying resilient, no matter what. And one of her famous quotes that she says is, let us remember, one book, one pen, one child, one teacher can change the world. All it takes is one. Sometimes 
we forget that we could be that one. Why can't we be the person to change the world? Why can't we be the person to take a stand? If we want corruption to end, shouldn't it start with us? If we want people to be more disciplined, shouldn't it start with us? Right? I, I believe everything starts with us as individuals, isn't it? I can't force someone else to, 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 to change, but I can change uh, myself. So let's remember Malala, right? Let's be persistent, let's be determined, let's be resilient, let's fight through all of this stuff. And it's, it's great that right through our economic crisis as well, there are lots of companies being resilient, being strong, being innovative, being positive, moving forward. And I'm proud to say that we are one of those companies. We are very positive, very resilient, right? Moving forward, right? Not taking no for an answer. Knowing, believing that there are solutions to every problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for staying with me right to the end. It's been a great pleasure and honor as always. Let's recap very quickly the 10 habits of great problem solvers that we discussed. Number one, embrace a growth mindset. Number two, stay curious and ask questions. Number three, focus on solutions, not problems. Number four, think critically and logically. Number five, stay calm under pressure. Number six, be persistent and determined. Number seven, collaborate with others, get diverse perspectives. Number eight, innovate and think creatively. Number nine, learn from our mistakes and failures. And number 10, stay positive and resilient. Okay, it's been great talking to you about this uh, habits of great problem solvers. I hope you got something from this and I hope it helped you. Do stay tuned. Don't forget to press that uh, like button. Uh, do give us a comment on what you thought and don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. Please share the word. Tell others about our channel so that we can keep helping uh, more people. All right. So I'll see you at the next video then. Till then, stay safe and stay blessed.